Hello formers, welcome to my channel. I'm starting a series of tutorial on open form. This tutorial is basically targeted for a beginner in open form who has basic understanding of CFD, fluid dynamics, and may or may not have a prior experience of using commercially available user interface friendly CFD software such as ANSYS. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll be doing lead driven cavity using open form, which is the most basic, basic example of CFD simulation um, if you want to validate your CFD codes. To perform this tutorial, I'm, I'm using OpenFORM 4.1 uh, in Ubuntu 16.04 operating system. So when once when you have installed OpenFORM in your Linux operating system, you'll get this case file uh, into your installation directory and you may want to copy your case file from your installation directory to your run directory. Here you can see on the left side this is the um, this is your this is your installation directory and your case files are stored in opt open form uh, tutorials then incompressible icoform cavity and cavity so we want to copy these three folders uh, basically cavity folders from our uh, installation directory to our uh, run directory in, in, for now this run directory is empty so we I'll show you how to copy them go to your terminal window with Control alt and T tab and uh, hit the run command I have already hit the run command so I'm already in, in this folder uh, so in order to copy copy this uh, this folder you can just enter uh, this command uh, this one is a copy command and it will copy your copy your uh, folder from your uh, installation directory to incompressible icoform cavity and cavity and this is your uh, destination destination folder in your uh, destination directory so hit enter there we go yeah there we go you, we have copied the cavity folder and there are three um, three folder inside the cavity folder the first one zero contains the initial condition of your case file of your cases and the second one is constant which contains the con which contains the constant properties of your case files and then the system uh, let's go and talk about system directory system folder in system folder we can see there are four files uh, uh, they are text file and it can be opened using the G uh, any text editor tool we'll first talk about block mesh dict so the uh, block mesh dict actually block mesh dict contains coordinates blocks and mesh parameters of the case uh, so the first there are several uh, principal entries in the block mesh dict file the first one is called convert to mirrors convert to mirror is basically a scaling factor for the vertex coordinates if the dimensions are in millimeter then you you may want to multiply your uh, vertex coordinates by 0 0.001 to convert them into mirror in our case uh, in our case, uh, the dimension is in is in 0 0.1 mirror, so we can multiply the vertex coordinates by 0 0.1 to convert them into mirrors. And the next one is vertices. Vertices uh, uh, contains the list of vertex coordinates. For example, starting from 0 0.000, we can. I will show you the our case file. How do, how does it look like? Okay, it looks kind of like this one. This is a lead. This is a cavity. And these are the coordinates of our cases. Um, uh, these are the vertex uh, vertex coordinates: 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 0, and so on and so forth. So these are the vertices of our uh, of our cavity. And then we go to the blocks. Uh, blocks contains a list of vertex. So there are eight vertex, as you can see here, from zero all the way to seven. So uh, it contains uh, the list of all the vertex. Uh, in this case, the whole domain is just one block and consists of all the eight vertices. Uh, blocks are always hexahedral in shape. Th that's why we write hex here. Uh, and uh, hex here, and this is the list of vertices. And this is, the, uh, this is the number of cells in each direction. So we divide the whole domain, whole block into... Uh, 20 cells in x direction 20 cells in y direction and since this is essentially a two-dimensional problem we only have uh, unit um, unit cells in z direction 
and then the uh, third entry in the blocks is the uh, expansion ratio one one and one we this this is a very basic problem and there are we do not want any grading of meshes uh, we do not want any grading of mesh shell so for now it's only one 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 and one that that means the expansion ratio expansion ratio of cells along the x-axis y-axis and z-axis is uh, is one if you if you may want to grade your uh, grade your cells to make it finer towards the wall and to make it um, closer towards the internal field then you can adjust these parameters to do it now the next one is edges uh, well edges when you connect two vertices uh, the edges will be a straight line by default but however if the if the edges is not straight line and it is a curved line or a spline then you can you can uh, enter uh, as curve line and enter inside inside your edges edges entries but for our cases since this is just just contains uh, the straight lines we we just leave this as empty and then the the other one is boundary so the uh, the mesh boundary is specified uh, in a list uh, named boundary. The boundary is broken into patches. These are the patches. You can just you can give any name to patches, but it is recommended that you give uh, you give a convenient name so that you can identify later when you want to uh, give a boundary condition to those patches. Uh, so the type of the patch is a wall, uh, the moving wall. This is uh, this is a this is what the moving wall we have given the boundary. Condition. You can see here three seven six two vertices. Three seven six two vertices. Uh, it will be our moving wall uh, uh, from our cases case because we know that this this wall is moving along the x-axis with velocity of one meter per second. So it's a moving wall. Other than that one, uh, this wall, the two sides wall and the bottom wall is uh, is fixed wall. Is fixed wall. So we define them under fixed walls. And the front and the back. So the front and the back uh, is actually not wall. They are the two-dimensional. Uh, they are the plane on the two-dimensional. So uh, we keep them. Uh, we keep, we define them. Uh, define the, their type empty, and then we define the uh, vert vertex vertices of the faces. Actually, uh, actually, if you omit omit any faces in the boundary list, a block mesh dick will assign them as a default patch. And, and name them default faces of the type empty. So even if you don't write this uh, this uh, this uh, boundary list in their block mesh dict file, uh, it it's just fine. But we have already written it here just just to uh, make sure we understand uh, our the name of our patch. And then the uh, uh, last one is merge patch pairs. Uh, merge patch pairs. Uh, we do not. We there are no block faces to be merged in this case, since we can keep them empty. Um, so I have told you all the entries in the block mesh dict file. Now we can go and um, run the run the block mesh command. Okay. Uh, now we are in run directory. You want to make sure you, you enter into the cavity folder first. Okay. Now we are in the cavity folder where we can run block mesh block mesh command. Okay. At this point, you want to make sure your uh, there are no errors in your terminal windows. Here you can see there are no errors because if there are errors, there may be something wrong with your block mesh dict file, and you may want to go back and edit them. Here you can see their patch zero, patch one, and patch two. Patch zero is essentially moving wall, and the patch one is a fixed wall, and the patch two is a front, front and back, uh, front and back. Uh, so if you want to view your viewer messes we can run run the paraform command to view your messes so let's run the paraform command okay there there it is the, this is the paraform window you may want to make sure you toggle on this i little i uh, i button apply and you go to the wireframe there you go if this um, this is your mess this looks if this looks sort of distorted to you then you can go all the way down and click camera parallel projections now there we go it looks uh, just like a, in a 2d plane so th that's how we have created mess we can close this window for now so once the mess generation is complete you can look at the initial fields set up for this case the initial fields uh, field data is stored in zero, zero subdirectory 
cavity zero subdirectory here. You, here you can see there are two two file uh, P and U, which is essential, which is basically pressure and velocity. Uh, now we can we can first examine P. Okay. So in pressure, uh, in initial condition of pressure, there are three principal entries. The first one is the dimension. The, the dimension set is seven scalar, which is uh, delimited by uh, delimited by uh, by the square brackets. Um, the, I will show you the, the seven scalars here. Okay, these are the seven scalar units um, uh, in the dimensions. Uh, the first one is for mass, length, time, and all the way to luminous intensity. And there, are each values, each values in this dimension, uh, dimension uh, corresponds to the power of power of each of the base units. Now the pressure in this case here, the pressure in this case is kinematic pressure, whose unit is meter square per second square. So you can see here in the in the length, it's meter square. So uh, so we have given it a value of two, and t for for value of time, we have given it a minus two. So and that that's meter square per second square, the unit for kinematic viscosity. And then the second one is second one is internal field. Um, Internal field can be uniform, described by a single value, or or it can be a non-uniform, where where all the values of the field must be specified. In this case, the, uh, since the pressure is a kinematic pressure, and since this is an incompressible case, uh, the value of the the absolute value is not relevant, so uniform can be set to zero for convenience. And the third principal entry is boundary field. A uh, boundary essentially. Uh, consists of the walls which we have split into uh, uh, two kinds of walls the first one is moving wall and the second one is fixed wall as I have told you in the blockman's dick file the moving wall uh, the pressure boundary condition for the moving wall is zero gradient so is so is it for fixed walls uh, because uh, because the normal gradient of pressure on this wall is uh, zero zero and for the front and back they are not walls uh, so we give them the empty boundary conditions. Similarly, we can uh, we can examine u, which is the velocity, uh, initial condition for velocity. Um, also, in the uh, initial condition for velocity u file, uh, there are three principal entries: dimensions, just like I have explained before. This the unit of velocity is meter per second. That's why we have given. Uh, one here and minus one here per meter and per second and the internal field internal field is initialized uh, as uniform zero uh, because we can assume that uh, the flow of the uh, fluid in in the cavity in the initial condition is at rest uh, but since it's a, since it is a vect vector uh, field we have to define uh, all the coordinates of the uh, vectors that's a zero, zero, and zero. Uh, uh, just zero velocity in x, y, and z direction. And for moving wall, uh, uh, for the moving wall, we know that the moving uh, the wall is moving it uh, moving along the x-axis with a velocity of one meter per second. That's why we give the val uh, value of one and zero, zero. This is the velocity for x-axis uh, along the x direction. And for the fixed walls, uh, we can we assume that. Uh, the boundary condition for velocity is no slip, and for the front and back, it's empty. So we uh, just explained you about the initial condition in zero subdirectory. Now we go to the uh, constant uh, constant subdirectory. Here you can find find a file named transport properties. Transport properties uh, contains the physical properties of uh, fluids. Uh, for an icoform solver, the only constant property, the only uh, property that you need to specify is the kinematic viscosity. The keyword for kinematic viscosity is nu nu, uh, and this is the dimension uh, scalar uh, that I have explained before. The unit of kinematic viscosity is, is meter square per second. That's why you give here two and negative one here. And we want to run this case. We want to run this uh, case at a Reynolds number of 100. And there is a relationship between the uh, between the Reynolds number and kinematic viscosity given by Reynolds number Re is equals to U times L divided by nu. 
um, u is velocity which is 1 meter per second and l is characteristic length which is 0 0.1 meter in our case uh, from the simple calculation we can get the get kinematic viscosity of 0 0.01 for Reynolds number of 100 that's all about the transport properties uh, now we go to the system here I've already explained you about the block mass dict now we go to the control dict <laughs> control dict uh, contains the data relating to the control of time and reading and writing of the solutions um, we can open the uh, uh, the first uh, principal entry in the control dict file is application which is icoform which is essentially a solver for this case th the solver for this case um, this is uh, icoform is basically a transient solver solver for newtonian fluid and then uh, we wish to run this solution from uh, we wish to run this solution from t equals to zero which means that the open form needs to read mm, read data from zero subdirectory therefore uh, we can set start from uh, at a start time and a start time at zero and then we wish to run this solution until the steady state is achieved uh, from a general rule of thumb uh, for a problem like this one uh, you can we can assume uh, we can reach a steady state uh, for at 0 0.5 seconds therefore the uh, stop at time stop at is defined as end time and end time is 0 0.5 second and then we go to the uh, time step which is represented by delta t uh, and we have specified at a 0 0.005 time step for a proper accuracy and numerical stability can be calculated from quarter number there's a, a very simple equations available and that relates quarter number with velocity and cell size we will not go into the detail here but uh, but in order to maintain such stability uh, in icoform quarter number should always be less than one uh, from a simple uh, calculation of cell size and uh, uh, calculation of cell size and velocity uh, we come up with a delta t of 0 0.005 which is uh, appropriate for stability in this case and then the uh, time step uh, and then the sorry sorry the uh, right control uh, because we want to <laughs> write these results at certain interval of time so that we can visualize this data uh, with the post processor later on there are several options for write control but we have chosen time steps and we want to uh, write uh, if if you start your simulation at zero and run it until 0 0.5 seconds and if you want to visualize your uh, data at 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and so on then uh, the write interval is 20 so we have set it at 20 write interval the other parameters are not that important so you can skip them for now And then there are two other uh, files called FV schemes and FV solutions. FV schemes contains finite volume discretization schemes, while the specification of linear equation solvers and tolerances and other algorithms are uh, specified in FV solutions. You may view these files, uh, but at this point, we do not discuss the detail about them uh, for now, uh, since this uh, is focused for a basic. Uh, basic uh, open form uh, open form tutorial uh, but later on when we when we uh, dig deeper into the cases then we will also talk about the fv schemes and fv solutions uh, so now i have explained you uh, about the all the entries uh, in the systems constant and zero so now we can go to the terminal window and run our case uh, to run our case you can just simply uh, simply uh, write icoform icoform keep in mind that ico i has to be small and f in the form has to be capital then just enter so here uh, we the solution is pretty quick it's already solved and then the um, the results of 0 0.1 all the way to 0 0.5 has been re written in our uh, system direct uh, okay in our cavity cavity directory so and now we will uh, do the post processing as soon as the results are written to, to your time directories we can view them using uh, using the using paraform uh, to to do the post processing uh, we can just go to your terminal w window 
and just write paraform okay uh, I did something wrong paraform okay there we go this is a paraform window uh, this is a uh, you can use this window for, to, for a post processing now we want to plot velocity and pressure let's go you may want to make sure you toggle on this little I button go to you apply okay so this is um, the velocity at the initial condition here you can see the internal field is basically um, basically at rest which is at zero as we have defined and then the the wall is uh, at uh, one meter per second uh, which we have defined uh, now we will see our final mm, final uh, uh, the final solution the velocity contour for the final solution okay so this is the uh, velocity contour for the uh, velocity plot for the uh, final solution at 0 0.5 seconds similarly we can also visualize pressure yeah this this will be your pressure uh, if you are not used to open from coloring uh, then you can also change the coloring by going here and then clicking here and close the, this is a, a red to blue wind, uh, rainbow uh, that uh, most of the other CFD softwares uh, use this kind of colors uh, so this is uh, actually the uh, plot for the whole whole domain whole geometry if you want a genuine two-dimensional two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional uh, two uh, contours two-dimensional part then I'll, this is how you do it okay. uh, go to highlight the cavity dot open form and go to slice go all the way down camera parallel projections and you want to slice uh, you want to slice this slice this at 0 0.05 0 0.05 0 .05, and 0 0.005 okay let's do it here 0 uh, 0 0.05 0 0.05 and 0 0.005 okay apply and click G normal apply okay so this is your two dimensional two dimensional plot you can see here yeah this is a two dimensional part this is a uh, this is a two dimensional plot for your for your velocity and uh, we can also see the two uh, for your pressure sorry uh, and then you can also visualize your velocity also change the blue to red rainbow okay now uh, <laughs> uh this is uh, this is uh, this is the plot if you want the contour of the, this two dimensional plot you can visualize uh, highlight slice and click on the contour a uh, contour by pressure here in the value range you can specify a certain value such as let's say specify 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 0 0.4 and so on and so forth and then you can just hit the apply there you can see the contours but we can also highlight the slice uh, maybe in the slice we can go to the pressure okay so this is the uh, velocity plot and these are the contours of the contours of the pressure uh, you can adjust this uh, you you can adjust this uh, value range here to get a better to get a better plot and better contours. Uh, this is just randoms, but uh, you can adjust them to make your uh, plot look nicer. Now I'll tell you how to do the vector plot. In order to do, do the vector plot, you may want to first make sure you toggle off this um, uh, toggle off these uh, plots, or you may, you can also delete them. But I would like to toggle them off. You highlight the cavity dot open form. And to to create a vector plot, we have to first uh, uh, we want to create them at the cell center. So highlight the cavity dot open form, go to the filter, and go to the alphabetical cell center and go to the cell center. Yeah, if you don't find cell center here, then you can just search cell center here. Cell, there you go, cell center. Okay, so cell center.
Okay, now you can highlight the sales error. Okay. Highlight the sales error and Okay. Sales center apply. Highlight the sales center and click on glyph. Glyph. And in the glyph, uh, we can set the scalars to be pressure and the velo vector to be velocity and it sends change the scale factor to 0 0.005 apply okay there you can see this is the velocity vector at the cell center <coughs> uh, we can see there are secondary vortices forming on the bottom corner of the two sides here and here uh, this will be your velocity ve vector uh, now you can also plot streamlines. I'll tell you how to do the streamline plotting. Uh, first, make sure you toggle the uh, velocity vector off, and select stream highlight cavity dot open form and select stream tracer. Stream tracer. There you go. And in stream tracer, uh, we want to. Uh, make this tracer running uh, vertically through the center of the geometry so you we can set this to be 0 0.05 this one to be 0 and this one to be 0 0.05 and uh, make sure you change the seat type from point source to the high resolution line source so 0 0.05 0 and 0 0.005 and this one will be 0 0.05 1 0 0.1 and then 0 0.005 apply okay this is your streamline plot if you want a high quality streamline plots then you can go to this search filter search search for tube and in tube you can uh, you can specify the radius of the tube to be 0 0.003 And then click apply yeah so this is your uh, high quality streamline plots okay that that's all about the plots <coughs> and if you want to validate your simulation results uh, we can also do that uh, in order to do that you first have to plot your velocity uh, velocity and pressure and velocity data to do that, you highlight the cavity dot open form, and select uh, select plot over line. Okay, apply. There you go. Uh, it has uh, plotted the uh, magnitude of hue magnitude and the uh, pressure <coughs> along the y-axis. Now you want to save this data. I have already saved this file, so I'll show you. Okay, so this is the uh, 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 u-velocity and this is the pressure. Now you want to copy this uh, u and point 0.1 to a different different sheet. Uh, this is the velocity, uh, velocity along the y-axis, this is the point 0.1, then mm, we can, uh, this is the column for Velocity divided by the capital U. That's 0 0.1, and this is the uh, point 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 this point divided by the uh, L. That's that's the 0 0.1 meter per second. Sorry, this U is one one meter per second, and L is uh, 0 0.1 meter. Uh, to validate this data, uh, there are uh, literature available in the internet. Uh, the one from the Gia et al. It's popularly used to validate the CFD codes. We can see here uh, this one is uh, the the one the line on the blue is uh, our simulation result and the the, the dots on the red is uh, from the uh, Gia et al. You can just simply go to the Google and then get their data here. Uh, we can from this from this comparison we can say that our simulation is very very much correct. Uh, they are strongly correlated. Uh, so that will be all for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, in the following tutorial, uh, we will refine the mess, we will change the Reynolds number, 
and then we'll compare the results again. If you may have any questions, please do mention them on the comment below. Um, and please like, share, and subscribe. Keep calm and love CFD. Thank you so much.